Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this, uh, I hope, magnificent summer school. I am Serge Robert. For the last three years, I have been the director of the Institute of Cognitive Science here at UPAM. And during many months, I have seen four people working very hard to make this summer school possible. There are our two employees at the Institute, Camille Charbonneau and Denise Goulet, who have worked very, very hard for months and months. And there are also my two colleagues, uh, Pierre Poirier and Stephen Arnad, who are co-responsible for this summer school. And Pierre is, uh, since uh, last Friday night, the new director of the Institute. And of course, the most important person in this summer school is my colleague, Stephen Arnad, who has worked night and day forgetting at times to eat, forgetting at times to sleep. And the result is the this outstanding program for this summer school. So I hope that you will have a wonderful, unforgettable summer school for the next two weeks. And I give now the microphone to my colleague, uh, Pierre Poirier. Thank you. Merci Serge, je vais parler en français pour euh, le caractère francophone de notre université. Donc, euh, bien, bien, euh... Bonjour à tout le monde et bienvenue à cette école d'été 2024 sur euh, les grands modèles de langue. Euh, donc aujourd'hui, on va avoir trois présentations consécutives. <rire> trois présentations consécutives. Une de euh, notre doyenne, euh, Madame Lucie Dumais. Ensuite, une de euh, Wendy Hall de l'Université de Southampton, qui est un de nos partenaires. Et finalement, euh, une dernière, euh, dernier mot de bienvenue de Yoshua Benjo de Mila, qui est aussi un de nos partenaires. Donc, je vais euh, sans plus tarder. Je vais passer la parole à Mme Lucie Dumais. Oui, OK. Dire M. Benjo, messieurs les directeurs de l'Institut, dignitaires présents, chers organisateurs, conférenciers, participants, étudiants, étudiantes, bonjour. Il me fait grand plaisir de vous accueillir dans, et d'ouvrir cette école d'été de l'Institut de sciences cognitives, la neuvième depuis 2003, qui porte sur le sujet des grands modèles de langue. Depuis sa création, l'Institut des sciences cognitives a fait progresser et essaimer la réflexion interdisciplinaire sur la cognition et bien entendu sur les technologies s'y rattachant. S'il est une voie que l'Institut s'est tracée au fil des années, c'est qu'il n'a jamais cessé d'être pertinent en fonction des enjeux sociétaux de l'heure. Ceci évoluant rapidement, très, très, très rapidement, ajouterais-je. Certains ou certaines ne le savent pas, peut-être, mais l'Institut des sciences cognitives est rattaché à la Faculté des sciences humaines dont je suis la doyenne. Ce rattachement souligne combien ce qui se rapporte au monde de la connaissance et de sur quoi moyens technologiques soutenant nos capacités à connaître le monde, voire à le contrôler, s'incarne forcément dans un environnement culturel, social, humain. As Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, to which the Institute of Cognitive Science is attached, it is a privilege to co-host with Mila and the University of Southampton, the ninth edition of the Institute's Summer School. My warmest welcome to all of you, particularly to our special guests, Wendy Hall, Dame Wendy Hall from Southampton University and the Professor Joshua Benjo from University of Montreal and Mila as well as to, all, to more than 30 speaker, speakers from over the world who will bring to us their expert knowledge on large language models. I am also delighted to learn that a significant number of students, graduate and undergraduate, will attend classes on a large array of subject matters over the coming fortnight. La présente école d'été rencontre parfaitement la triple mission de notre faculté de l'université, soit le partage des connaissances de pointe, la formation de personnes étudiantes et l'accessibilité des savoirs à un large public. Je me plais toujours à, à souligner la dynamique de, le dynamisme de notre communauté et sa grande ouverture sur le monde et ses concitoyens. L'Institut de sciences cognitives est à cet, à cet égard exemplaire. À la Faculté des sciences humaines, ce sont les professeurs de linguistique, de philosophie de psychologie en particulier, qui s'investissent dans les études sur la cognition. La Faculté offre d'ailleurs des concentrations, 
ainsi que plusieurs cours interdisciplinaires. En sciences humaines, on comprend qu'un sujet comme les grands modèles de langue et les systèmes d'intelligence artificielle qui les sous-tendent exigent d'embrasser une vision large, voire intégrée, des analyses disciplinaires, tant des sciences humaines que des sciences expérimentales, pour faire face aux énormes enjeux qui nous incombent d'affronter pour la culture et la technique, sur le plan de l'éthique et pour l'avenir que nous sommes en train de construire. Grâce à cette école d'été et en particulier aux fabuleux moyens techniques de communication dont nous disposons en 2024, tous les contenus de conférences et de plénières seront accessibles à la communauté locale et internationale. C'est une chance extraordinaire d'avoir accès à un nombre imposant d'experts et de sommités internationales ici à Montréal ou devant les écrans. Plusieurs régions du monde sont présentées parmi un auditoire de près de 1000 personnes au cours d'une cinquantaine d'activités, parmi la trentaine de conférenciers et conférencières, il y a le Canada, bien sûr, le Royaume-Uni, le Sud, le Québec francophone. Je félicite donc le comité organisateur, de même que le personnel de soutien et logistique de l'UCAM et toutes les personnes ayant contribué à la réalisation de cette école d'été d'envergure. Je réitère ma reconnaissance au directeur de l'Institut, le professe les professeurs euh, Serge Robert et Pierre Poirier de philosophie et ma joie de pouvoir les compter parmi les membres les plus dynamiques de notre faculté. Enfin, je vous souhaite à tous et toutes de et aux participants euh, de, de deux très belles semaines et je vous souhaite encore bienvenue à cette école d'été. Welcome to this 2024 Summer School. Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. Je serai bref. Dame Wendy Hall, Wendy, who I would like to hug at this very moment, is Regis Professor of Computer Science, Associate Vice President and Director of the Web Science Institute, one of the sponsors of this event at the University of Southampton. She became a Dame Commander of the British Empire in the 2009 New Year's Honours List and is a Fellow of the Royal Academy uh, of the Royal Society. I'm not going to read the rest of these. It's very long. It's as long as my arm. And I want more time to uh, hear Wendy. Wendy, welcome to Montreal virtually and actually the second time, but this time virtually. I know. Thank you so much, Stephen, my old friend, and big hugs to you. Um, uh, um, the Web Science Institute is very honored to be asked to co-sponsor this event. I only wish I was with you. If I'd have had more notice, maybe I could have come, Stephen. So next time I need a bit more notice, but I so enjoyed the last time I was with you. But anyway, um, for those who don't know, Stephen was at the University of Southampton for many of his formative years. <laughs> and uh, he actually moved from the Department of Psychology to Electronics and Computer Science. Um, and we had offices next to each other and spent many wonderful hours talking about symbolic grounding when we were doing the early work on the semantic web. Do you remember those days, Stephen? On the semantic web, all that I learned so much from you and need to relearn um, in this new era of uh, uh, AI. Um, and... Uh, you know, those were the 90s, it's 30 years ago, we were talking about these issues. And, and it was so wonderful when you sent me through the program to see what a fantastic program you'd put together, very interdisciplinary talks, talking about the things that we really, really, really need to be talking about at the moment. I spent all my time, unfortunately, going to co conferences, which are largely full of very technical people, so not very diverse at all, and uh, in any sense, right, not just gender, but discipline and geography. And um, they all talk about LLMs from a purely technical point of view. And I, you know, it's the race to AGI. And I feel like it's the race to the bottom, right? Because um, the term AGI has been so devalued. And uh, what is it? It's become quite meaningless. Yoshua, you're welcome to disagree with me when you come on. But it's, to me, it's become quite meaningless. I think you agree with me on that one. But um, and, I've, and I feel like, um, you know, I was in Singapore last week for the UN. I'm on the United Nations AI advisory body. And we we spend our time reading reports written by Joshua and um, the uh, uh, which is good. Right? That's a good thing. 
Um, but then I was also stayed on for the Asia Tech Summit. Um, and this and the the conversations I have were so depressing. There's the people who think we're going to reach AGI in its full extent next year. OK, and then there's somebody who, who stood up at a panel and said, well, when we reach AGI in 2027, without defining what they mean by AGI or any of understanding any of the things that you're talking about, you know, language, reasoning, uh, does it, do they do, do LLMs have any sense of knowing what they're doing and what would it what would it mean? If we got to AGI, you know, this is the the people who go on and on about the existential threat, and yet they still want to reach AGI. And yet, well, hang on, what 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 exactly are we talking about here? What safety do we really need in all this uh, to to ensure that the human race does live beyond twenty twenty seven or whatever date is plucked out of the air for when we'll reach this undefined term AGI? And I noticed in Joshua's re the big report that he did for the UK Safety Summit or whatever that turned out to be, um, whoever commissioned the report, he's changed the term to, to uh, general purpose AI, which is a, a much, or his team have, his, his, his the people who put that together, which is a much more, he still needs to define what that means and what the consequences are for the hum, human race if we get there. But but at least we, 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 we stop using this devalued term AGI. And um, so I just want to congratulate you, Steve, and I'm not going to talk for any long. I want to hear Joshua talk, but I want to congratulate you on putting through this program. Very, very pleased to be co-sponsoring it. We'll put it up on our website and I will I won't be able to listen to it all the time, but I will dip in and out and I will also make sure I listen to all the talks over a period of time. Absolutely fantastic. Well done. We need more, more of this this sort of activity to make sense of where we're going in this new era of AI. Done. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's, that's, all, that's only local applause. There's also applause all over the web. Uh, can you switch the presentation to him? That's it. That's I'm it. going to stay and listen to Joshua. This is my. This is why I'm on the call, really. <laughs> Joshua. Uh, how 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 did your face just appear? Say something out loud so there makes. Hello, sense. do you hear me? Okay, good. Yes, keep talking. Keep talking while I talk. All I'm right. going to spend time uh, presenting you. Nobody in Montreal needs a presentation. Uh, this is Joshua Bengio, who is responsible for what it is that people, co-responsible for what it is that people are talking about here today. Joshua, go ahead. You froze other people yes i i did work on this um do you see me do you hear me yes yes see hello yes all right all right i'll i'll start okay okay i'll start and um eh ben, bonjour uh, d'abord et bienvenue à cette école d'été uh, en mon nom et à celui de mila ça me fait très plaisir d'être associé à cet événement um you know uh there's a reason why we're here besides uh, still an incredible uh, persistence and will. Um, the, there is an AI revolution uh, and it is being really triggered by these large language models. But, but I want to go back a little bit in history. Um, I started my master's degree in the mid 80s and um, I got really excited about the connectionist models, the like ancestors of, of these uh, neural nets. Uh, that's when backpropagation really started as well. And I worked on uh, many of similar things with tiny, tiny models, not large at all. Um, and then in 2000, I introduced the neurits, the, uh, what we call the neural language model. So they were very similar to the ones we use now, except they were much smaller but they were much bigger than those that people before had made and they introduced notions um, of uh, representations, word vectors for words uh, in a language model and that turned out to be very important. And then um, uh, in 2014, my group introduced the use of attention in these neural language models. And uh, it was published later at the Stats in 2015 for a neural translation. And one year later, that was really fast. Google took essentially the same kind of architecture with attention for machine translation, and they created a new version of Google Translate, uh, which was amazingly better than all the previous versions. And basically, they scaled up the thing we did at, at, at the academic level. 
um, and engineered it beautifully. Uh, that already sent a signal in the whole industry that uh, these kinds of models were going to be transformative. One year later, in 2017, um, uh, uh, Google uh, Group also introduced transformers, which basically take these attention um, uh, mechanisms and stack them over many layers. There's a connectivity problem. Joshua, we connection oh, to make we... um, training. Why is it now? Yes, All right. it's Hopefully it's going to be fine, but I'll yeah. continue. Fine, so in um, around 2017 is also when people started to realize that as we make these architecture, these neural net architectures for language models bigger and bigger, the perplexity, the training objective gets better in a kind of uh, very predictable way. And that has continued since that time. And, and we haven't seen the end of the, those scaling curves. Um, this is also the reason why uh, industry has been investing so massively, because it looks like we can just pump more money into this and they get smarter. Um, so non nonetheless, I've been talking since also about um, 2018, uh, 2017, actually, um, about what is missing from these large language models. They're really good at capturing what corresponds to intuition or system one. Uh, not so great at reasoning, although, although they're getting better for each you know, version of these systems. Um, everything about higher level cognition seems to be uh, not so great. And that's what I've been focusing my research in the last few years. Um, but it, now industry has realized the importance of you know, these high level cognition abilities and reasoning. We have AI systems that are really good at planning uh, and in a way reasoning like AlphaGo, but don't know a lot of stuff. Like the rules of goal is just, you know, nine lines. And on the other hand, we have things like um, chat GPT, which knows a lot of stuff, but how to put these things together, um, how to reason with the pieces of knowledge that something like AlphaGo has remains an open problem. So what does this all mean for the future? Um, uh, I, I don't think that we expected to see AI systems mastering language the way that they do now just a few years ago. Um, for me, it was a big surprise and a bit, of, a bit of a shock because I hadn't really been thinking about, well, what if, what if we succeed? What if in a few years or a couple of decades, we reach human level AI? I don't think that really, really we understand sufficiently the systems to answer those questions satisfactorily. And already we're seeing signs that those systems are not doing exactly what we want, that they can be toxic, um, they to deceive people um, because they're trying to maximize a reward. And so I think it's really important that we um, uh, work hard at better understanding these large language models um, before we get to the point where they could be as smart as us and potentially you know, do things that could be dangerous for humans. In fact, sometimes I feel like we're all like sleepwalking um, racing towards a fog, this uh, AGI race that people talk about. And there are warnings that behind that fog, there could be a precipice. We don't really know. So um, uh, such a summer school is, is very important to help us move in the direction of better understanding of the understanding that these systems have. Et donc, uh, ça me fait encore très plaisir d'être uh, présent pour vous uh, souhaiter la bienvenue et féliciter Steven et toute l'équipe qui a organisé l'école d'été. Merci. Merci, Joshua. Je vais, je, je vais passer tes, tes remerciements à, à Steven, parce que moi, je suis Étienne. Et bien, de toute façon, euh, on, va couper, on va couper le son, le, 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 le lien pour quelques minutes, et on recommence l'enregistrement. On commence la première, la première enregistrement. We're cutting, for, we're cutting the, the recording and then we're going to restart with Richard Vitrell. Apologies for the loss of time, Richard.